deal with arguments with your boyfriend. How long should two people date before marriage? When does it become a red flag? Shouldn't be settling for anything less. Someone said, what type of birth control pill do you take? Do you express vulnerabilities to friends? Someone said, how did you tell your fam about your boyfriend? Any vaginal care recommendations? If your relationship is strong enough, then you should be able to redefine your relationship. Hi my beautiful girls, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so happy that you're here and that you clicked on today's video. I'm about to start getting unready. Oh my god, I just found a bug on my vanity. <gasps> Ugh, it's like a little tiny bug. Uh, hate bugs. Okay. Anyways, what was I saying? I'm about to start getting unready for the day. I need to take my makeup off. I'm gonna head to the gym. I figured why not take you guys along with me to get unready and I'm also gonna be answering some girl talk questions and we're just gonna have some girl time right now. So fun to get ready together, but it's also fun to get unready together and just chat it up. That's like my favorite thing to do. I always double cleanse. So I start with like a micellar water or some kind of like cleansing oil first. And I just went to an Alame event where I got these little micellar pads. So I thought maybe I should just try them out today. Oh my God, hello. It's literally just like little tiny pads soaked in micellar water. While I start, I'm going to go through some of the questions that I had you guys ask on my Instagram story. And we're just gonna answer some of them. I literally wrote, do not hold back for these questions. So I don't know what they're gonna be, how crazy they're gonna get, but let's just go down to the very bottom. Start from there. Oh my God, wait, I'm gonna cry. The very first one says, I sat next to you at the Justin Bieber concert and thought you were so gorge. <laughs> Girl, stop. I think about the Justin Bieber concert or any of them. I've been to like, how many have I been to? I've been to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I, I want to say I've been to seven Justin Bieber concerts over the course of his like whole entire career. Like I've been to almost every single tour of his except for the very first one. And when I was in high school, I literally went to like three concerts out of his like purpose tour, I think. That is really sweet. I love you so much. I wish we would have met and I'm looking at your profile picture and you are so gorgeous. Are you kidding? Next one says, how do you deal with arguments with your boyfriend? This is a really good question because I feel like on social media, people make their relationships out to be like this picture perfect thing and they don't talk about, about the downs as much as they talk about the ups of their relationship. And it really can create such an unrealistic standard for relationships in general. Like when people see that, they compare it to their own relationship and then they feel bad about themselves or like think that there's something wrong but in reality it's actually very healthy there to be some arguments in a relationship i think like there it's never gonna be just like perfect all the time in any way shape or form so coming from somebody who's been in a relationship for almost eight years now me and sam have definitely had our fair share of arguments especially because we're just two humans growing up literally at the same time together and going through some of the most like crucial time periods of our lives like this is the time where we're discovering ourselves and turning into the humans that we are and like learning about ourselves My advice for handling that is number one to just make sure that you guys are both on the same page make sure that even though you guys are having a disagreement there's still a mutual agreement that you guys are both on the same team together and you're not fighting against each other i should be working together as a team to resolve this disagreement together like the mutual goal of this argument is to come to a conclusion and come to a solution together to fix it and make it better and i don't know depends on the situation but and also just have compassion for each other and just realize that you're both upset about something in this moment you have to just try understand where the other person is coming from and like put yourself in their shoes and find a compromise basically communication is key and you have to be on each other's team if that makes sense someone said i'm scared to grow up and have to deal with so many responsibilities how did you fight that girl that was literally me like i remember sitting in my bed and crying when i was about to graduate high school because of that exact thing like i was just so scared of the real world having to like be an adult and like do real world things like a lot of it was stemmed from my social anxiety because i was genuinely like how in the world am i going to function in this world when i'm like so scared of leaving my house and like going anywhere alone and like doing anything like i eventually i'm gonna have to do it and it was so scary to me i will say as you grow up and as you go through the steps of life and you find your way in this world it definitely becomes easier and it also kind of becomes fun as you grow i feel like your brain develops more and you feel like you actually want to do these things like you actually want to do adult things but then there's also times where it really sucks and you realize a lot about the world that you 
maybe didn't realize before when you were just young and naive and it's very scary like the world is a very very unfair place i will just say that it's just, it's so incredibly sad it's just something everyone has to do you also have to remind yourself that you're not the only one in this position you have all of your peers that are like your same age going through this exact same thing just try to enjoy it enjoy every phase of your life no matter what because you only have one life to live. I think I'm done with these pads. I probably went through like 10 of these, but either way, it did get off a lot of my makeup. I'm gonna now wash my face with soap. I like to double cleanse and then we'll come back and like start the skincare. So BRB. Okay, I'm back. Just washed my face, feeling nice and clean. I feel like there's like a smudge on my camera. I can't tell. Um, I'm gonna put a little lip liner on because I just can't even look at myself without it. Don't mind me. Just gonna put a little lip on and i'm also going to start by ice rolling my face i just got this one from the skinny confidential and i'm obsessed with it it's just so good and it feels so amazing so i'm just going to ice roll for a little bit as we continue this next one says <laughs> genuinely curious what deodorant do you use i'm a smelly girl <laughs> okay honestly i just ran out of this deodorant that i've been using it's the secret weightless dry spray shampoo i really loved the scent of this but I'm like almost out of it. So I just recently switched to using this deodorant from the brand Wild. I got it in PR and it literally says my name on it. So cute. So I've been trying it out. I think it's aluminum free and it actually works pretty good. Usually aluminum free deodorants do not work for me and they genuinely like make me smell worse. So maybe see if your deodorant is aluminum free because that's what was happening to me. I just like couldn't take it. So I had to go back to just like regular deodorant. But I don't know, so far so good with this wild deodorant. I don't know how you buy it, maybe like online or something. I've never seen it in store. So I'll let you guys know an update, but I'm, but so far so good with this one. Also, if you literally can't find one that works for you, try to like do like an armpit mask. Like I know it sounds funny, but like if you have like toxins in your armpits and like stuck in there, that could be why the smell is not going away. So try to do like a little like detox mask, like literally just put them right on your armpit. Um, how long should two people date before marriage? When does it become a red flag, etc.? I don't think that this is even a thing in my opinion, especially in my case. Like I've been dating Sam for eight years and we're not engaged and I don't think we're gonna be engaged anytime soon. And I think that's completely fine. I don't think that there should be any time frame for someone to get engaged. Like every couple has their own situation and their own reasonings. Maybe they don't wanna be married. Maybe they don't really care about marriage. Like everyone just has their own opinions on it. It should necessarily be a red flag ever. Like you just don't know. I will say if you're like dating someone and you guys are like getting to the age where you both like want to be married and he's just like not proposing and like, I don't know if it's just like getting like a, in a sticky situation where you guys have had a conversation about it and he's like maybe saying that he doesn't want to and you really want to, then it could be a red flag because like you need to make sure that you and your partner are on the same page and want the same thing. But I don't think that there's like a set time frame. You know, people get married after less than a year of dating and it's just like everyone is different. I feel like everyone is allowed to do their own thing. And if they feel that that's the right decision, then that's their decision, you know? How do you tell your boyfriend he needs to be more romantic without hurting his feelings. This comes down to the communication that I was talking about. Like number one, you should feel comfortable with your boyfriend or your significant other to literally say anything to them. And you don't have to say it in a mean way. Like you don't have to be mean and you know, make him feel bad for it, but you should be able to communicate how you're feeling. Like you can just go up to him and say like in a relationship, I really benefit from romantic gestures. Like that's my love language is having someone do like romantic gestures. It really shows me that you care. Just say it in like a nice way. Like you know, this is like something that like I look for in a relationship. I feel like it can really benefit our connection if there's more like romantic gestures being done and it would really show me that you care and stuff like that. And then just sit back and see what they do. Openly tell them how you feel and things that you would like to be improved on in the relationship. And then don't put pressure on it. Just sit back and watch and see if they fix it because the way that they respond to it says a lot about them, I feel like. Because, you know, in the past, like, there there will be things that, like, I will mention to Sam. Like, oh, I would really like if, you know, we can dedicate more quality time for each other or something like that. And then he will actually, like, take what I say into consideration and, like, 
do something about it, which really means a lot to me. So if your partner isn't listening to you and you tell them all the time nicely things that you'd like, then you should probably reevaluate because you should be dating someone who gives you everything that you want and makes you feel like the most special girl in the world and you shouldn't be settling for anything less. Tips for keeping a consistent routine and advice to not get discouraged when you mess up. This is a good one because I tend to be really hard on myself and I keep myself on a tight schedule, like especially with social media and my work. I like to be very consistent. You know that I post on YouTube twice a week, which if some of you don't know is definitely very time consuming having to film and edit two full long form videos in a week. Think of new ideas, all that. And don't get me wrong, I love it. Like I'm not complaining about it. I would not change it for the world. I have so much fun doing it, but that doesn't change the fact that it does get like kind of draining sometimes and sometimes I do mess up and I'll have to like you know maybe post late or I'll have to like film a video like last minute because like just life got in the way that week and I do definitely beat myself up over it which I shouldn't because like life happens and like even in terms of just any consistent routine I think a big part of that is to not put pressure on you know getting mad at yourself if you fail or if you you know mess up for one day like it's really not the end of the world i honestly think it's healthy to give yourself a little bit of a break when you're trying to stick to any type of routine because i feel like that just helps me to be more motivated to continue it afterwards and just have grace with yourself like it's okay to take a break it's okay to mess up it's okay to fall back a little bit everyone needs those times it, i feel like they just only make you better in the long run anyway someone said what type of birth control pill do you take need to find a new one Okay, this is something I've never really opened up to you guys about, but I've never been on birth control in my entire life. I never went on it because due to the gene mutation that I have, the BRCA1 gene, the reason why I got my double mastectomy back in January, I've known that I've tested positive for this gene since I was 17 years old, so right around the time that I would be, you know, getting on birth control, but after talking to my doctors and the specialists of this gene something that they told me is that birth control is just not good for somebody like me who has this gene like i'm supposed to be doing everything i possibly could to to decrease my risk of developing anything really scary birth control was on that list of things that is just not good for me all the hormones it was just always something that scared me and i made that decision for my health personally not to say that it's bad for any of you guys definitely talk to your doctors and you know they're the they're the experts here i don't i don't know all i know is that i went and i spoke to my doctors about it and that is the advice that they gave me personally for my situation so that's what i would advise you guys to do definitely go and talk to your doctors about your situation because they're the only ones that will be able to tell you the correct answer where's my gua sha don't not do anything definitely just go and talk to your doctors about it someone said how do you express vulnerabilities to friends i'm the last person you should be asking that because i'm so bad at that like i don't like talking about myself like about serious things about like things that i genuinely feel like sometimes i'll be able to open up depending on the situation but like it was so funny when it came time to tell my friends about the surgery that i was getting it was obviously something very vulnerable to talk about that like i didn't share with anyone before and i think i had told them beginning of 2023 so a whole year before i got the surgery is when i told them about it because at that point i didn't know when i was gonna do it and i was so scared telling them just because i'm not good at like talking about things like that the look on my face when i was about to say it they literally thought i was about to say that i was pregnant or something they were like are you pregnant and i kind of just kind of got nervous and started laughing and they thought that like it, i was like they thought that that's what i was telling them and they were like freaking out and i was like no no i'm not i'm not pregnant it's actually something completely different like i'm just like the worst at it like i just like you can see it all over my face i start like shaking i start like you know my my voice sounds different like i have like a shaky voice i'm just like the worst at it like i just don't like talking about my feelings and my problems i like being the one that listens to my friends problems and i like like giving them advice but when it comes to like me like i don't know why like i get kind of like i don't know i just never am the one to be talking about my problems if that makes sense but you should you should be able to and if you have good people around you they will make you feel like comfortable enough to open up to them someone said how did you tell your fam about your boyfriend i was 
16 at the time and me and Sam were best best friends so my family already knew of him just because he would come over all the time like in group settings when I would have my friends over like he would always be there so they had met him already and they like loved him just because he's always been like such an outgoing like goofy just like fun person so like they like liked him just as my friend then little by little you know he would start coming over just him and like I was like so nervous like I didn't want to like tell anyone that we were like talking or like seeing each other or whatever and my like older sister was like you guys are dating and I was like no we're not we're just friends like I was getting so <laughs> defensive about it because I was like young and like scared but honestly it was so easy because they were like okay yes you are like you're obviously lying and then eventually I was like okay yeah <laughs> like it was just such a easy transition since we were so close before that um so I'm like really lucky that I had such an easy time. But I'm gonna do a tiny little face mask because I feel like my skin's been needing it. So I'm gonna use this one from Loops. Someone said, what are some things that you do when you're feeling very down? You are my comfort YouTuber. Number one, that is like my favorite compliment or like comment that I see sometimes that I am someone's comfort YouTuber because I have comfort YouTubers and I've always had them like ever since I was younger like I always turned to YouTubers for like my comfort so like just the fact that someone feels that way about me is actually the best feeling in the world like it makes me feel so happy I could actually cry every time I sit and like think about that so just know that I love you and I'm here for you every single person that's watching this right now I'm here for you and we are in this together like genuinely that's always what I want my videos to feel like we're going through life at the same time figuring it out at the same time whether you're older than me whether than whether you're younger than me just me taking you guys along my journey like, i think is so special that we get to do it together and like no matter what point we're in we're always gonna just be like hanging out together like i don't know it's just so fun so something that i do when i'm feeling really down is i like to just like kind of put my phone down take a few moments to myself like sometimes i really just like need to be alone literally put on a youtube video like or like some kind of podcast or something to kind of just like turn my brain off i'll journal write all the feelings and thoughts that are in my brain onto paper so that way i can get them out of my mind and sometimes when you're writing them down you kind of can like work through the thoughts as you're writing them if that makes sense worth a shot like sometimes journaling doesn't really work for me sometimes it does worth a shot to just get it out of your brain and onto paper and i will just redirect my energy try not to sit and dwell in that feeling for too long like definitely give yourself time to feel the feelings of whatever you're going through but also don't sit and dwell in it for way too long like once you've done it for quite a while then you want to redirect that energy into something that's going to benefit you whatever it is something that's going to benefit you and that is going to make you feel better like whether it's doing some self-care whether it's making yourself a little to-do list to clean your room and like do something that you've been putting off just something that's going to make you feel better about yourself that can also like kind of distract you from whatever it is that you're going through like i really really like to sit and just like clean my room or like reorganize something that i've been like putting off whenever i'm feeling down because i feel like it gets my mind off of it something that's productive that's going to make me feel better once it's done and it's like benefiting you you know what i mean so you're like redirecting that energy into something good and not just sitting and dwelling in the bad <laughs> this is such a cute face mask i love it it's nice and pink three ways to romanticize your life number one just make everything a fun activity literally you're going to the grocery store you're gonna make that a fun activity you're gonna make it a little game for yourself how i can get all of the stuff that i need in this amount of time you're gonna make a cute little to-do list you're gonna pull out your colorful colorful pens write down all the stuff that you need to get from the store and then check it off every time you get it at the store like i like to do little fun things like that that make mundane things funner like that's honestly kind of why i like to do to-do lists all the time because it like just makes it more fun to me so make sure your environment is like super cute and like something that you enjoy whether it's like you know decorating the inside of your car or just putting cute little decorations around your room like i just like to take everything that i do in my life and create joy out of it because the only way to feel happiness and joy is if you create it yourself like you can't just wait for it to happen like you need to create it yourself and anything that you do of your day anything that's going to make you feel happy you do that like whether it's getting up and going and getting yourself a coffee every day really wearing cute matching pajamas to bed just so you feel nice and cute 
when you're going to sleep or doing a little face mask like in the middle of the day like it's literally just about the little things and it's very personal to you like something that's going to make you feel happy that's what you do even if someone else is going to sit there and say oh that's silly like you don't need to have matching pajamas you can just wear a t-shirt to bed no if you like the satin cute little feathery matching pajamas that's what you wear you know what i mean any vaginal care recommendations vitamins washes wipes blah 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 no do not use any of those things trust me i've tried them when i was younger i've tried sprays and washes that you can get at the supermarket they are so bad for you it doesn't matter if it says on the bottle that it's good for you just don't vagina knows how to clean itself that is the healthiest way i after talking to all doctors that's always what they tell me is do not put anything there just when you're in the shower use clean soap and water around the outside don't put anything on the inside you will give yourself an infection and it's not fun do you shave wax or laser i shave i've tried laser and i've tried waxing and both of them <laughs> were just so painful to me I definitely like wish that I could be one of those people that go for like laser and wax and maybe I will try it again sometime in the future but like I just have a low pain tolerance so I stick to shaving but who knows maybe sometime in the future if I find a place that like won't hurt me <laughs> I'll try it out do you ever feel like you're growing apart from your friends um in the past I've definitely felt this and it's a sad thing but it's also a very healthy thing like there's gonna be so many people in your lifetime that you know are only there for a season just a small part of your life and it's okay it's healthy everyone is growing up and going in their different directions it's hard when you grow up and then your whole relationship kind of changes because now you have all these responsibilities you can't just be sitting around and hanging out 24 7 like you used to when you were younger now you actually have to go and work and do things that's gonna prohibit you from being able to do the same things that you you were once able to do and if your relationship is strong enough then you should be able to redefine your relationship and be able to work through that and the ones that stick around then those are the people that are meant to be in your life you know all right let's do like one more while i take this off someone says do you compare yourself to other influencers if so how do you manage comparison um i feel like everybody compares themselves someone at some point in their life and it's not good obviously not gonna lie yes i do find myself sometimes comparing myself to other influencers without me even like noticing it and i always had to stop myself because like that's obviously not healthy i have to remind myself that just everyone is on their own path social media is really hard to grow on i feel like no one really talks about you know the the people who are out here like me that are grinding and have been posting consistently for years now and like i've definitely had so much growth and so much progress and i'm so so grateful for it i always stop myself because i'm like i love what i've been creating i love that i work hard and even if i do have some moments where i'm growing very slowly like i'm just still having so much fun and i'm so thankful for the platform that i have already like i don't need to always be looking to grow more and more and more like i just want to enjoy every phase that i'm in and everyone is on their own path i don't need to be comparing myself to anyone because this is my life that's their life like it literally has nothing to do with me so while it's like human nature to want to compare yourself to others you need to just like stop yourself in your tracks when it happens and redirect those thoughts because it's not healthy there's no reason for it you are on your own path and you are going to get to where you need to be stay true to yourself and you will without a doubt get to where you need to be you know what i mean so i'm just like having fun I'm, i stay in my lane i'm in my own little bubble and it's been working for me so my skin honestly feels amazing right now. Like that was a nice little self-care, skincare ritual. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and getting on ready with me. I'm gonna head to the gym now. I love you guys so, so much. I'm always here for you. My DMs are always open. I really do try to answer my DMs over on Instagram and talk with you guys as much as I possibly could. Because you guys are the ones that mean the most to me, especially those who like watch my YouTube videos. Like you guys are just so special to me. It means the world. So yeah, I love you guys so much. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I will see you in my next upload and have a beautiful rest of your day. Love you.